Hey guys, if you're out on the road, you're camping, you need a power supply just like this one. It's got connections for all your electronic devices and to boot, if your bike has a dead battery, you can jumpstart your bike with this in a Jeffy. Um, the one universal challenge that you have with this is they have a proprietary connection that you're gonna need in order to plug them in. Now I've set up an SAE connection to my battery here to make it easy to jumpstart, easy to power with a, a battery charger. So today I'm gonna convert this into something that will plug directly into my SAE connection while maintaining this connector so that I can plug it in to my power pack. So I'll show you how to do that. And bear in mind that all of what you see here today applies to any one of these types of power packs. The connectors vary depending on what brand you choose, but inevitably for about $100, you can get something that will power all your electronic devices while you're at the campsite and always give you peace of mind knowing that you could jumpstart your bike two, three times, no problem. In fact, most of these will start a car easily. So great tool to have when you're out moto camping. I happen to choose a brand called Halo. You can find a number of different units, very similar, several different connections. You've got USB ports in the front. And of course you've got that proprietary jumpstart connection. You've also got a household outlet. And as most of them do, there is a light for convenience. And so let's get started. All right, so I've got this extension, SAE extension. Obviously, you know what that looks like. And so I want to convert, basically add this connector to the end of this extension. So let's cut the wires, leave myself as much room as possible. one end of this. So I'm going to splice these and solder them. I've got some solder. I've got some flux paste. I have to strip these wires. Then what I'm going to do is call the Western Union splice, which is basically I'm going to put the two wires together hook them around and come back the other way and then spiral them and then layer that with some flux and solder. So the, so I, the flux really helps the solder soak into the wires, if that makes any sense. And then when I'm all done, I wanna be able to have it be covered by heat shrink tubing. So you have to put that on ahead of time. So that feels like that's not gonna be enough because I'm gonna take basically the wire and do this with it and wrap it back around and then shrink it and solder it. When it's done, the wire is gonna be this long. So the whole connection that's all covered in solder is gonna come up to here. So this piece of heat shrink tubing is too long. I have to shorten it up so it's not in my way when I'm working. So those two pieces should be fine. So next step is to get rid of some of this insulation on the wire. Try not to cut any strands of the wire while removing the insulation. It's a substantial amount of wire, which is good on this side. Not sure what the quality of the wire is going to be that came with the jump starter. Feels a little softer, maybe not as strong. It's just as thick, but the wires are more numerous and much thinner, easier to break. So I'm gonna forget, if I'm not careful, to get the heat shrink tubing in place before I do much more. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna give it a go with some black nitrate gloves to try and keep the flux from getting all over my fingers. So the idea here is that we're gonna bend halfway with these connections. Thank you. 
So that is your Western Union splice. It's very strong as far as if you happen to pull on it, it's less likely to come apart because it loops through. And with wire this thick, I also want to try and limit how bulky it is. So this serves both purposes. I feel like it's a good way to keep the bulk of the connection down because these wires are so thick to begin with. Both connections are ready for some flux, a generous amount of flux, paste, which helps the solder flow. And then I'll heat it up and add some solder, which is electrical repair solder. And I expect the flux to drip, so a scrap piece of cardboard is helpful. Okay, so now I've got my connection, which will work on my power pack. It'll also work with the SAE connector, which I've set up connected to my battery. I'll show you that in a separate video. So now I can pretty much connect anything I want to the SAE connection on the bike from that perspective. And I've got a universal connection to this power pack to make it simple to jumpstart the bike, repower the battery. And looking forward to using this at campsite for my electronic devices, recharge my phone, that kind of thing. Because sometimes we've got power and sometimes we don't. So these are super useful. And it's, as far as the specs, I'll include the specs on this particular unit in the space below. Hope this was helpful for you. If it was, hit the like, subscribe to follow along, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.